breakfast is served. I'm still really irritated about the the restrictions on mobility scooters here at West Burns Run. I won't be able to start making calls on that until about eight. And I gotta pack up, move on to the next campsite. So it probably will be closer to noon before I dig into that. So you're not gonna get the final outcome on this video, but I, I, I promise I will update you when I, when I have more info. I was gonna say resolution. I don't know if I'm gonna get any resolution, but I'm definitely, I'm not gonna let it go. Billy Williams with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Yes, Mr. I have spoke, I have spoke with, uh, with my lake manager uh, about this situation, and he advised that you would be okay to use the mobility scooter. Uh, I would ask you, though, that you keep a copy of your uh, whatever your disability documents on, uh, on on your person while, while you're operating on the roads there in the park. According to the Americans with Disability Act, that's not necessary. It's actually okay. not, you're actually not allowed by law to ask me what my disability is or any information other than, okay. are you disabled? Okay, okay. Then I'll leave it at that then. And he advised that you can operate your mobility scooter in the park. All right, thank you. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by and you got here just in time. Just in time for us to do some tent camping Texas style out at Lake Texoma. We're at Preston Bend Recreation Area. This is a milestone video. This is the last Corps of Engineer campground for Dude RV to visit on Texoma Lake. So let's go do some tent camping. Texas style. We have arrived. Preston Bend Recreation Area, Texoma Lake. Took me a, about 20 minutes to get here. How much of a drive? Let's do a site review real quick. Site number 34. That's a sweet concrete pad right there. I mean, you could hit level, but you don't, don't need any blocks. It is a water and electric site. With a drop off. Woo, look at that drop off. That's a long way down. Don't catch me walking down there. We are 30 amp, super level pad, concrete, picnic table pad. It looks like a brand new metal picnic table. Charcoal grill that's rotted out in the bottom, if you can see that. And then a fire ring with trash in it. That is not a trash receptacle, people. Throw your trash in the dumpster. I mean, there's a dumpster right there. How difficult is that? Now, for me, this is gonna be an interesting, interesting camp because I'm traveling with a tent or a couple of tents. So I have that as an option. And maybe here. I think here would be better, but man, there's a lot of wind coming off the lake. Which is funny because I'm on the other side of the lake and I, I thought that the wind would be coming from like that direction. <laughs> I don't know. So let me grab a bite of lunch and we'll deploy Little Red and we'll go see some stuff. Stay tuned, more to come. I got the TP up. The Hasika TP is pitched. And one of the things I really like about these teepees is they go up so fast. You put some stakes in the ground and put a pole up and the tent is pitched. 
And I thought, seriously thought about, I thought seriously about just not even putting a rain cover on there. But for this video, I, I decided I'm, I'm shooting a video just for the, the tent. So I didn't put the, the cap on it. That, I don't think that's necessary. Well, <laughs> my neighbor, my neighbor wanted to be, wanted to make sure I was aware that when it rains, this is a, a pond. And you can tell that if you look at the, the tree branches, so that, that actually floods when it rains. So you wouldn't want to pitch a tent there if it was going to rain. It's not supposed to rain. So I went ahead and I, I pitched the tent before I deployed Little Red because, oh, just because I decided to change things up. All right, stay tuned. We'll go see some stuff. If you're interested in putting a little hook in the water at Preston Bend, you'll be happy to know you don't have to have a boat. They have one of those dual purpose, a dual purpose dock that allows you to fish and load a boat at the same time. How incredible is that? Looks like this is a real, pretty deep cove, too. You can't see it on camera. From a boat ramp fans, here, here is the boat ramp. You can't see, but there's a, a ledge in the water. I don't know how deep it is. But you, the lake is extremely low. So normally the water level would be right up here where that riprap is. All right. Let's go see some Preston Bend stuff while we're tent camping Texas style. It appears that the Corps of Engineers team has been doing some renovations so this 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 site I don't know what site number this is but they've got new tables new, looks like relatively new concrete and a whole new take on the, the the camp stove stand no longer is it a wooden plank table looking thing now this is interesting there's a power pedestal right there but it doesn't look like there's a site I don't know maybe you can pitch a tent there and the dump station is mighty convenient here at Preston Bend it's right there on the side of the road but where else would you expect a dump station to be all right, let's go, let's, let's go find some more stuff. I didn't know what I didn't know because I'd never been to Preston Bend and that's why I'm here. So you'll know, had I known what I know now, I would have been over here since I'm tent camping. I don't really need water. I've got a jug of water. This is site number 16. These, this little tent camping loop has electricity and community water right there. Bring a long hose. And then there's some, there, there's actually some pretty cool semi-primitive sites in here. Now that's actually a really good site. Let's, let's, whoa. I don't want to go down there because there's gravel and a little red Little Red don't like gravel. I'll walk down. Got a cover over the big table. Power. Water. Pretty level pad. Wind break. So the wind, there's not any wind blowing here. And then you got water access right there. Not any place to pitch a tent. Not really. Unless you're going to pitch it on the gravel. A 
be interesting getting an RV in here. I can do it. If somebody spinning out, pulling their load up this steep hill. I don't even know how you could get in there. I guess you could pull into that one and back in. But if there's somebody there, you can't do that. And if you are coming in with a big RV, be advised. <laughs> there's a tree. There's clearance. Yeah, that'd be tough to tough to get an RV in there, a, a long RV. You'd have to literally back in from the road. Because there's not any place here to turn a big RV around. Don't try it. Get a side over there. All right, let's go see some more stuff. And we are back in the wind. It, it running against the wind, as Bob Seeger said. All right, so if you got a group of folks that wants to get together and you're kind of thinking Preston Bend might be the place, well, how about that? But there's no overnight camping in the group shelter, but there are a whole bunch of primitive sites convenient to the group shelter. I don't see any power, so come with a generator. Let's go see if we can find some more stuff. Site number one, Preston Bend. This is a primitive site, but there is water. Water's over there. No power. But there are no neighbors. Now there's the main drive is right there. So if you don't need electricity. Site number one is is the bomb. Yeah, there's actually a looks like a couple trails going down to the water. Yeah. All right. Let's see if let's see if Little Red can get back up the gravel hill and go see some more stuff. So you can tell when there's not much going on <laughs> when I'm when I'm doing an experiential video and I'm at the restrooms. They're actually pretty good shape. It's a bare concrete room with stainless steel fittings. Very similar to what you would find in a correctional institute. <laughs> in, a, in a correctional facility. All right, let's go find some more stuff. Looky there, I got a ready-made <laughs> green screen. <laughs> uh, let, let's try something. Shazam! Now that's pretty dang cool. I don't know where we went, but we went somewhere on this new green screen. And I never even thought of that. Let's shift around here a little bit. I don't know if this black line will go away or not. So I wanted to give you an update. I left you kind of hanging last week when we were over at West Burns Run and they had told me that I could not operate my mobility scooter without a special permit. Now, if you're not disabled, it's, it's not that big a deal for you. But if you are disabled, that's discrimination. That's, that's treating me, the disabled person, different than you. Because uh, you can walk or ride your bicycle anywhere, pretty much anywhere you want in a, in a public campground. And to tell me I have to go and get a special permit. And oh, by the way, I have an access pass from the, the federal government, which allows me to take my truck in places that you would normally hike. If so to have some park ranger tell me that I have to have a special permit, uh, that's, that's number one, that's discrimination. So the first thing I did this morning after I got up and packed camp was to get on the phone. So at 8.30, I was making phone calls to the 
the Corps of Engineer project office here at Texoma. I ended up leaving a voicemail because nobody picked up. So I called the district office in Tulsa and I left a voicemail. And the voicemail simply said I had a, a you know, the staff here at West Burns Run, or they're telling me that I cannot operate my mobility scooter without a special permit. I'd like to get some clarification and, and I need to know how to get this permit because it's not, that doesn't say that anywhere on recreation.gov or uh, the literature that I got when I checked in. I ended up having a conversation with the receptionist. Uh, it was the third or fourth phone call. Uh, explained to her what I was trying to accomplish and she ended up putting me in. She said she took a message. <laughs> The ranger had given me, he tore off a little strip of paper and wrote somebody's name and phone number on it. He said, that's who you need to talk to to get this, this permit. You can't operate your scooter if you don't have this permit. Well, I called that guy, ended up leaving a voicemail with, with him. And he called, finally called me back. And, and here's how that call went. Oh, yeah, with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Yes, Mr. I have spoke, spoke with, uh, with my link manager. Uh, about this situation, and he advised that you would be okay to use the mobility scooter. Uh, you I would ask you, though, that you keep a copy of your uh, whatever your disability what? documents on. So, it, if you have, if you rely on a mobility scooter, don't let anybody tell you you can't operate your mobility scooter anywhere. You are allowed to operate your mobility device. Now, it's got to be an ADA compliant mobility device for you to be legal. And by the definition given by the Americans with Disabilities, the ADA document, four wheels is not compliant. It has to be three wheels. It has to be a one horsepower, about 750 watt or less motor and it has to have a seat if it's got four wheels technically it's not compliant so they can tell you you can't operate that but hold your just hold hold your ground because they can't ask you questions like well what's your disability show me some documentation that you're just that's not allowed they can't ask you are you disabled and the answer is yes or no that's as far as they go if they ask you any other questions, they are opening themselves. They, they are subject, no matter who it is, they're subject to civil litigation. Even the park ranger last night that was telling me I cannot operate my mobility scooter in the public campground where they're allowing people to ride bicycles and walk. I can hold him civilly liable Meaning I could sue him and I could sue his boss because his boss is the one that made him say that. And I can sue the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, should I so desire. I'm not out to sue anybody and, and make money, make a career out of suing people who are denying me access. I am out to make an impact for you, the disabled person. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something when you can. All right. That's all I got to say. Something else I got to say. I'm some, I'm really impressed with this this Hasika tent. It's not nearly as loud. I, I thought for sure when I set it up here on this this windy hill. I got a great view of the water. What a great setup for a, a tent. I mean, right out there's the table, the concrete patio, so I don't have a whole lot of dirt getting tracked in here. But it's not making nearly as much noise as I thought it would. Uh, it's really, it's really quite pleasant in here, to be quite honest. So, might check it out. Uh, I've got a, a Friday's Find video on this, and of course, it's going to be in the truck camping uh, idea list on my Amazon influencer page, and that's in the link, the description below. The link is in the description below. 
since we're talking tent camping Texas style, <laughs> since, since that's what we're doing on this super windy day, lessons learned. If, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go tent camping at Walmart or even on Amazon, get a buy a mallet, one of these. Because when you go to drive stakes in the ground, sometimes that ground is really hard. If you're gonna get into the tent camping scene, you need to invest in some additional, the, the tent by itself, great. Most of these tents come with this little thing right here, a little piece of wire. <laughs> Basically, that's supposed to hold your tent. It doesn't. My neighbor yesterday, his tent was, was literally blowing away. Fortunately, the I have, I carry these. That's a 10 inch spike. I carry a dozen of these in the, in white lightning. That's just part of the kit that I have in the truck because you never know when you're gonna need to hold stuff down. If I didn't carry these big spikes with me, this tent would be gone, buddy. <laughs> It'd be a big old balloon just flying away. So do yourself a favor, add that just to your camping kit. That, these with a big old, with a mallet. Doesn't have to be a big one. Just get a mallet and some big spikes and keep them with you. You never know when the wind is going to kick up and you're going to want to make sure your tent doesn't blow away. All right, let's go see some more stuff. <laughs> I'm scrambling. It's a bald eagle. Of course, we're just getting to see his tail. <laughs> I just, I missed it. He, he was coming up out of the, off the lake. I, I, I guess he caught a fish. Just sitting in there messing with YouTube! For the clouds and the wind, it makes for a pretty sunrise. Look at that. I'm gonna go make some coffee and then we'll close out our tent camping Texas style video visit to Preston Bend, Texoma Lake. Good morning. Wind is still blowing here at Preston Bend. Not quite as, not quite as high as it was yesterday. Yet, <laughs> it, it blew all night. Kind of shifted directions last night and came more out of that direction instead of that direction. Tent flap was popping. Made it kind of difficult to, to to sleep, but I made it. I did it. Some good coffee. Not a whole lot here at Preston Bend, other than quiet. Of course, with the wind blowing, I'm. I can't tell you if there's any road noise, but I don't think there is because the road 
that you turn off of to come in here it's a dead end road this is a peninsula on the lake so not gonna be a whole lot of drive by uh we're not close to any main roadways just out here kind of in the middle of the lake if it wasn't for the wind this place this would this would have been a really great little campsite we're just in you know this is spring for texas so the, the weather's kind of wishy-washy i'm not upset about the wind it's bringing in gulf moisture and we sure need the moisture but preston bend i think is definitely worth paying a visit to uh, if you want to put a hook in the water there's there's plenty of shoreline access there's a fishing dock boat ramp and that looks to be a deep water cove I haven't seen a whole lot of people fishing the last two days. Simply, it's just so windy. The I spoke with the park host last night, yesterday evening, late. He said that this is a it's a very peaceful place. He he does his he works hard to to make it look good. Now, here's to you. I don't know. I don't rem I don't remember your name. I appreciate what you do. I did have um, a bit of an issue with the showers last night. So there's four showers. One of them was locked. I think it may be out of service. And uh, then the two on the back side, I couldn't get any hot water out of either one of them. And the remaining one, uh, it had hot water, but it was kind of like taking a shower out of a fire hose. There just wasn't a whole lot of spray. Uh, but it served its purpose. I got, I got clean. I wasn't freezing cold in the process. That's the report for Preston Bend Campground, Lake Texoma. That, this has been our, our tent camping Texas style video. I like this teepee, if, if, if with the one exception, and that is, well, there's, there's two exceptions. And if you watch the product review video, you'll, you'll hear me go into detail about this. It is not a cold weather tent because it is very well ventilated, which means it's a great warm weather tent. I don't know how it will fare in inclement weather, I think it will shed water pretty good, especially if you put a, a I like the tent. Watch the product review video and you'll you'll get the lowdown on it. Um, for my tent camping Texas style adventure, instead of breaking out the cot, I'm a side sleeper and I, I toss and turn a lot and and uh, last several times I've used that cot. I, I didn't sleep real good because I couldn't flip and flop. So this time I broke out an air mattress and it was much better. And I think I'll continue, I, I hate being down on the floor like that, it's hard to get up, but better to sleep on the floor and have a hard time getting up than be off the floor and not get any sleep. We'll leave it at that. So we're done here at Preston Bend. Our next adventure will be backtracking. Uh, I guess you could call it backtracking. I'm going to take Yappy and we're going to go do a work remote, working remote test for her at a Texas campground. We're actually going to be a lake to walk in him. Last. On my previous visit to Lake Tawakini, it was freezing cold. So we're gonna go in the spring, or maybe I can get to do some fishing and some trail rides and, oh, but we're gonna see how Starlink works out for Yappy's new remote work opportunity. So with that being said, make sure you click on that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss an episode of the Dude RV Adventure never know where I'm going to be or what I'm going to do. If this is your first visit, I'd be honored. I would truly be honored if you'd click, consider clicking on that subscribe button. 
and remember to hit that bell as well. If you found some entertainment or, or valuable information, usable information on this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd click on that thumbs up and share me across your social media. That, that really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And for those of you who have been following along, I gotta stand up for this. For those of you who have been following along, that's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. That is why I'm in front of this, I'm, I'm at this beautiful campsite on the lake. Just look at this. Even with the wind, it's a beautiful place. And for my patrons, thank you. I truly appreciate it. It really helps pay the for the gas you rock all right y'all come back now you hear